Okay, welcome everybody to the second of the online Munchausen uh, hosted tea parties. Um, I'm Dr. Zach and I'm here with a good crowd and hopefully we'll be getting more people joining us soon. So I'm just gonna take some time to ha let people try to introduce themselves and I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves, show off their teaware and talk about the tea they're drinking today and then we'll see about having a nice conversation. Uh, who would like to go first? I'll go. Uh, so I'm Jess, and my favorite tea mug is my giant Stitch Zodiac mug. For those who know me, they know I am obsessed with Stitch. I have 30 Stitch toys plus a Stitch tattoo, so it's a bit of an obsession. And my Stitch mug for a Gemini, since I'm a Gemini. Uh, my favorite part about it is with all Zodiac things, it talks about what you're like. This one says, part puppy dog and part monster, it is your dual personality that helps you to adapt to any alien situation. And I figured a pandemic virtual tea party is an alien situation. So I figured it is the perfect mug. <laughs> perfect. Uh, I am drinking Harney and Sons hot cinnamon tea. It is my favorite tea for cold weather, and it is a cold, wet, dreary day here in New Jersey. So, hot cinnamon tea it is. I think Chris was showing off her stitch. Mm -hmm. Turned him into a puppet for a cosplay. He's a Jedi stitch. I have five that I can see just in this room. Oh, <laughs> six. There are six in this room. Don't forget the Kigurumi. Uh, my Kigu is upstairs. And the hoodie. My hoodie is downstairs. <laughs> and by upstairs, I mean the attic. Don't put your theme in post too often. No. Oh, yeah, that's okay. going to happen a lot, by the way. Our light is broken. <laughs> Sorry, your mic's really low. That's because it wasn't on. <laughs> on. No, that's my introduction. All right. So, um, so who wants to go next? I think we'll go with, maybe we'll go with Jamie next. Hi, I'm Jamie, and this is my niece, Erin. Hi. She's staying me with uh, doing the duration of um the social distancing because of the campground i live on so she gets to enjoy the outdoors but she doesn't get to do really do that at home yep and i'm drinking a Rose all gray with the very first tea set that i ever purchased um and i have a complete set um with um two mugs and but i'm not using the sugar dish because uh, we already have sugar in this dish and I decided that today was a good day for all gray since I just uh, especially since I wanted to use this set so I guess um, Jared I guess you can be next well um, I think I saw Kyle's hand up there but um, no worries go for it uh, uh, we can hear you or I can hear you anyway Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 I can't. Hang on. All right, so I'll, I guess I'll go. Um, well, I can tell you about the tea I just drank, actually, um, because I have to have my tea in the morning, otherwise I am a horrible person up until then. Um, lipped in uh, black tea, um, with usually with yogi uh, ginger additive for easier digestion, and I managed to dig up this little teacup. Uh, my mom has a little porcelain uh, collection in tea, tea party collection in her uh, kitchen so I was like oh and that's about it so I guess Kyle do you want to go next sure yeah um, what were the things that I should mention other than the the tea set that I'm using your name the tea the tea set you're using uh, any any treats you're having alongside hi I'm Kyle um, I'm drinking a Kenyan purple tea from an oolong pot that my mother purchased me a long time ago. Let's see if I can get it right. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, I never get to use it. And uh, I figured this is a great opportunity to use it. That is that the Just Tea brand uh, Kenyan purple tea? 
So uh, I, you know, I don't actually remember the brand. I bought it from a tea shop when I was in Cincinnati last mm. year or so. I bought the purple tea and I bought some kind of like rooibos red tea. Um, I thought this one was a little bit more appropriate for this teapot. Um, yeah, and I've had it forever. I've never, uh, I've never used it. So this is a good opportunity to use it. Now, have you played with it and added this, added a citrus to it? So this pot when it was bought, I think it's unfired or unglazed on the inside. So I don't put anything other than tea in it. Um, no sugar, no citrus, no anything else. But this purple tea, I think I've only had it like once before. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to try it with any citrus, although that might be nice. So just, just for the people who, are, uh, who, who haven't experienced, purple tea um, has, a, has extra antioxidants in it. It has uh, the anthocyanin antioxidants that's in blueberries which is also a pH indicator. So if you add citrus, like a little squirt of lemon to the tea, it changes color. Mm. So, all right. Cool. Thanks for that. I'm gonna try that later. I lost my video. Oh, we see you. We see you. Yeah. Cool. Yep. All right, so. I don't see anybody. Uh -oh. I don't know what happened. Oh, you can't see us? I cannot see you. Okay, we can see you though. Oh, it's the ostrich situation. <laughs> All the zookeepers are like, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, there! I found you. <laughs> Hello. Would you like to introduce yourself and maybe the tea you're drinking in your teacup? Um, I'm Debbie Miller. I'm in Chicago, and uh, I am drinking a Harney and Sons cinnamon clove, which is quite delightful. It's my go-to winter tea, and uh, this is my teacup and my matching tea saucer. That's fantastic. I love it. I have a teapot that matches it too, but it's not one that has a basket that I can brew in. So um, I'm using my Fortnum and Mason two cup teapot, which is the most amazing teapot ever. Um, I think that's it. Um, I, I got this tea set a couple years ago and it inspired me to start having tea parties at my house because <laughs> I love Halloween. So Halloween tea parties all year long. I was planning on having one in April. I guess that's not going to happen. Well, you can, it can still happen this way. Yes, it can. And I don't have to cook for everybody, which is kind of a disappointment. Yeah. I have actually been considering doing theme parties at some point. I have friends in the fairy community and friends in the steampunk community. So we could do dress up tea parties mm -hmm. that way too. Friend fairy tea party. Yay, uh, fairy tea party. I have garb for all three of these teams. I almost wore one of my fairy costumes today, I will admit. <laughs> Kitty! <laughs> and Nacho. Oh, that's so cute. Nacho, so ordinary tea party. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sarah, have you introduced yourself yet? I have not, and I'm also amused because it looks like Kyle has a tail now with the cat <laughs> behind him. Is that Bear? <clears throat> yeah, that's Bear. It looks like, hi, bear. Hi, bear. <laughs> she just came over and she tap, tap, tapped on me, too. She likes to come up and just go, pat, pat, hey. Does anyway, she, she, so she has no claws. She, oh. she was declawed by her previous owners, unfortunately. Oh. Um, but yeah, so I'll introduce myself. My name is Sarah. And uh, I am likewise, like Kyle, utilizing a teapot gifted from my mother today because I never have an excuse to use it. I have one. Uh, the glass flower ball teapots that I use every day at my desk because um, that stores a lot of tea enough to last me all day and many bathroom trips. This one is much smaller. So I have this little oh, uh, teapot with its little matching cup and in there I currently have a, a jet, the last dregs of my jasmine oolong from back when Tivana was awesome mm -hmm. um, and existed. <laughs> and then for my snack, um, I'm actually eating, um, this is about my breakfast time because I can't eat first thing in the morning. So I am trying to get fancy with little rolled up balls of Cliff Bar. This is the Caramel Toffee Cliff Bar. <laughs> I only just realized that uh, thing on, um, in the background and just there's a, a hat, which is mm -hmm. hat. Yeah, it's, well, it's my taco hat uh, yeah. from the Adventure Zone. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, and speaking of Jess, I also have um, a tea strainer, hmm. little owl. Oh, thank you, Jess. My, uh, this is my old lady uh, dress form. Who, you know, she's very old. 
and partly falling apart and I didn't know how it would be, you know, having a naked lady on camera. So mm -hmm. I, I covered her with a robe. <laughs> how very tasteful. <laughs> <laughs> Priscilla, would you like to go next? Oh, sure, because I'm just pouring my tea now, because, uh, like, I can put on makeup for a thing. Oh, wait, tea. <laughs> That's the whole part of this exercise. Uh, I have a very plain ceramic teapot, but I have a cute little embroidered tea cozy that I made myself. But it's all wrinkly, because I'm addicted to linen fabrics, and those get wrinkly. And ironing a tea cozy is weird. Uh, <laughs> And this is one of a set that my uncle gave me. I think it's from a Metropolitan Museum collection. Adorable. Beautiful. There's also a picture of a little fish inside. <laughs> uh, and I am drinking tea and absinthe, uh, who also have a color changing uh, tea, I think, of that purple tea. Um, and this is the Irish, Irish whiskey cream. Mm. So it's a black tea, uh, Assam black tea, cocoa bits. And it is so, so it's basically a Bailey's tea. I love tea and absinthe. I, yeah, they're so much fun. I got, and I made sure to get the extra large size of this because this is amazing. And I think they still have it on their website, but I don't know how everyone's doing with their websites right now and post, off, post offices and such. So, but bookmark it for when the plague ends. <laughs> I love tea and absinthe. Uh, I hang out at their booth all the time. Yeah, yeah they're amazing. Too. I'm glad so, they were at a region I could stock up. <laughs> I had planned on stocking up um, at um, I Symposium? forgot the name of the event I was aiming at this weekend, but Symposium in Cincinnati. Yeah. Oh. Um, dark side. I was aiming with um, um, Nikki from Mayfair Moon helping at her booth. Oh, at Dark Side Con? Yeah. Dark Side of the Con. Yeah, Dark Side. Inexorably long con name con. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I went so last long. year and it's great, but I'm like, the name, guys, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then next we have Stephen M. Uh, sorry, I didn't know how to put my real name in there. All right, if you want. I'm I can, Martha. Oh. No, I can change that for you. Okay. So, I have administrative abilities. Ooh, awesome. All right, so rename and do you, want to, do you want it to be Martha or something else? Martha, yeah. Martha. Unless you want to make it Millicent. Either one. Yeah. All right, so we have Martha. Martha, would you like to introduce yourself, show off your tea and your teacup and all that? Sure. Um, my name is Martha. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, and I was supposed to be at uh, Symposium. Yeah. Um, so, uh, or shortly I would be. So my teacup is um one that i bought at a potter's and i don't know if you can see that but it's got an octopus on it oh yeah Aww. so and then it comes with random uh, coaster that also has blue on it so uh, but if it turns out i was uh, getting all these ads from uh, uh potter in madison and then it suddenly dawned on me that i knew her from high school mm -hmm. oh so wow. i went there and then she had octopus stuff and i'm like okay i need the octopus stuff Anyway, so I am drinking Earl Grey. Um, it was a gift. I am not entirely sure where it came from. So, but it's very tasty. All right, and then I shall start. Okay, so showing off my teapots. This is, I, I, for the people who know me know that I am a thrift store fanatic, so I always like to go treasure hunting. So my teapot was one treasure hunt find. Ooh. And I've slowly been assembling a whole tea uh, tea set with this rose uh, um, de design on it. it apparently, it was a pretty popular design back in the day. And then this other thrift store, this was actually a garage sale find. Ooh. Very fancy cup. Yes. Very fancy saucer. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the tea I'm drinking, it's it's, I, it's my pumpkin pie chai. I, uh, there's a pumpkin pie uh, tea that you can get from various sources. Uh, I originally found it uh, through uh, at through the looking glass over in Smithville before unfortunately they had to close and then what I do is I make my own chai spice mix this mm -hmm. way I can chai up any tea I want mm -hmm. so I could do vanilla chai I could do pumpkin chai I could do a black chai I could do oolong chai just by adding the spices and then the tea leaves so that's what I did with this and then the snack I have just some shortbread cookies to dip in the tea 
Yeah, yeah, I, I forgot to mention that I'm uh, actually baking my food at this moment. Ooh. Irish soda bread. That's why I was a little late. <laughs> now, did everyone get a chance to introduce themselves? Sarah, I'm finishing up the challah I baked last week, and then I get to bake more challah tomorrow, I guess. Depending if I have to go to work or not. <laughs> My friend posted a... Uh, a, a tutorial on how to make your own sourdough starter. So I'm probably going to start doing that and baking uh, s survival sourdough bread. I've done it and my starter is ready. And I am very amused that there is now a weekly calendar event on my calendar that just says feed mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, switching to Brady Bunch for you. <laughs> It's easier view. Yeah. So, anybody? How's everyone doing? Anyone want to talk about anything? Uh, Where are you, Zach? Oh, I'm in Pennsylvania, Lansdale, oh. PA. So, I'm sorry. Where in Pennsylvania? Lansdale. Lansdale. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm. This is this is my this is now my work office as well. Same. So, yeah. Yeah. Spare bedroom slash sewing room has become my work station. So much so that my 1970s fold-out sewing table is now my computer stand. <laughs> We've the been actually sewing talking machine about can kind of drop down into the table. Uh, yeah, we've been actually talking about. I was going to go remote anyway and start working for myself in like June. So now we're just kind of on a hyperspeed of that, and. Uh, we had been planning to redo the room one way and then yesterday I had an epiphany of how else to redo the room. So we'll be splitting up soon and each having our own office, but none of that can happen until I can go and buy furniture. So uh, basically I'm like, if I had moved around and done my new office plan two months earlier, we'd be totally set. But instead we've got the, the hot mess that's between us right now. But. This is a, um semi clean version of my room. <laughs> um, actually had it in pretty good shape um, up till uh, last week and then what happened so what happened was we had to uh, for storage reasons I uh, put some of the stuff in my um, younger sister's room and then uh, she came back uh, what with the uh, plague and everything um, and um, had me move the stuff out of her uh, room back into here so yeah yeah. Yeah, last week we were in my sewing room, but it's a little bit more of a mess than it was then because I was making some um, face masks of yesterday. And so I was like, well, we'll go uh, in, uh, we'll sit at the kitchen table, um, well, dining table that's kind of in between the kitchen and living room. <laughs> because if it was nice out today and not uh, of waning uh, like crazy, then I would have been outside and uh, at the campground I live at. Yeah. So everyone, we have a new guest starting. Um, Ellen, hello. If you can turn on your microphone um, and introduce yourself when, when everything goes up. Uh, we're asking that you introduce yourself, show off your teaware, and tell us about the tea you're drinking today. Working on it. Oh, I think she's on the computer. She right. just built. So, looks like we're still connecting. I've got a... There you if you go. look behind me, this is about a quarter of my entire living space because I live in a 400 square foot apartment and have not left it in two weeks. Oh. I live in Queens. Oh. Mm. Girl. But ironically, I cleaned it all February uh, so I could have people over all throughout March. So, but it, so it's like really nice right now. <laughs> that kind of happened with us. We were supposed to have somebody over the same weekend that Jersey City went on lockdown. By the way, hi, neighbor. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, Jersey City person. The, uh, the person who has the other long distance commute to get to anywhere else in Manhattan. <laughs> I sometimes say that, that Queens is so the least fashionable part of New York City that people would rather live in New Jersey. <laughs> you know, I have not found that. I have had many friends in Queens who still insist that we come over to visit them, but never will ever set foot into New Jersey, except for the one time she was driving through Jersey City anyway. In my defense, I spent 18 years trying to get out of New Jersey and eventually succeeded. So I did, so for me, it's trauma, but yeah, it's still like. 
What I find amusing is just like in the rest of the United States, New Jersey outnumbers everyone. Yes. <laughs> so right now there's something one, to be two, three, proud four. of, I guess. I'm not sure about that. What was that? Something to be proud of, I guess. I'm not sure about that. Uh, stats. So, okay, so Ellen, me. can you give it a try now? I unmuted your microphone. Okay, that doesn't seem to be coming through on your end. Oh, I think her microphone just on her end isn't working. There is a chat, a text chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That. So. Oh. All right. So hopefully we can. She can work out that technical. Go to your settings. Oh, she can't hear us anyway, right? Um, uh, I think. Um, she I yeah she okay. can hear us she can hear us so okay because I know that my mic on my computer doesn't work so I have to use my um, my stand mic and I had to go into those settings and tell the zoom to use a stand mic Mom, why don't you try using your tablet instead of your um, computer? So I am, I'm used to calling El um, Ellen's my mom. Oh. Hi, mom. Hi. Hi Jamie's mom. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Jamie's mom. <laughs> Kyle's going into tech support mode. We're good. Yeah, so that's <laughs> All is well. So. Always good to hey, have come a and drink tea. Around. So, all right. So hopefully, yeah, we'll work that out. Um, so while you're working that out, I can tell you the story of my teapot. This teapot. Oh. This is the Fortnum and Mason two cup teapot that my sister bought for me when she was in London a couple of years ago. And there's a basket in it. Oh, this is gonna be, oh, can I do this? Yes, I can, okay. So see this basket that has the tea in it? Yep. It has a little ring on it and it's only held in there evidently by pressure. So I was cleaning that out and the little ring came off. And if you don't have the ring, then it drops into the basket. And I went to the Fortnum and Mason website because it's a borosilicate teapot. Obviously these things break every once in a while. So I'm like, can you just send me another basket? And I didn't hear anything. So I went to their Facebook page and I posted a picture of it and sent them the same question. And she's like, oh, thank you for showing me a picture. Now I understand what you mean. She goes, I'm going to check in on this. She comes back and says, we're sending you an entirely new teapot. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I and I, I was like, surely that's wasteful. I mean, you could just send me this basket. Surely one in the shop has broken. But they sent me an entirely new teapot. But in the meantime, a friend reminded me that uh, super glue is biocompatible because it was originally made to glue yourself together if you're playing yeah. hockey. Mm -hmm. um, and so I fix this one so now I have a second teapot so if you know anyone that's in desperate need of a teapot I have a brand new beautiful teapot <laughs> that I need to find a home for <laughs> so they're extraordinary it, it takes two cups and it's durable and I use it every day I've got a million teapots and this is the one I use all the time have you ever played with flowering tea yes and I do have those I get them from yum cha okay um, and uh, they're delicious, and I have a larger one too for the flower tea flowers. Um, I was but, gonna say, that would be perfect too for that too. Yes, yes, this is good for the smaller ones. For the larger ones, that are about an inch when you get them. I've got a four cup that works beautifully, and they blossom and they're lovely. So that actually reminds me, um, speaking about different tea companies and traveling and stuff, um, is your stra is the strainer up here still? Okay, well, it's downstairs. Um, but last year, last January, uh, Kyle and I went to India and we, I think he's getting it. Um, we went to this place called the Kettlery. Has anybody ever heard of it? Mm -mm. Okay. I have, but Other than Jess, why. because we gave her a strainer <laughs> from the Kettlery. No. Um, the same strainer that he's getting. So the Kettlery is basically everything I dreamed that Tivana should be. Um, it's a tea shop very similar to Tivana, except they also have a sitting area where they will serve you biscuits. They will serve you the tea. They do a whole like show how, uh, letting you smell it letting you taste test everything and then they serve that individual tea in whatever kind of style that it is best served into you it was fantastic it was wonderful it was beautiful the tea is delicious um 
they do have a website and they ship really cheaply to the US. So if it, um, I would put, I haven't tried Adiago teas, but I know that's one that most people are more familiar with. And um, my boss has had, has had them and her, and brought them into work. Um, I lied, I have tried, I've tried once. Um, and uh, they seem to be very similar. So if you like Adiago, you would probably like um, the Kettlery. Here's the tea strainer. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Wow. It's Ooh. very cool. It's um, the, the, the cage actually slides down. You fill it and then you slide the cage up. And um, funny, interesting side note is that um, in the smaller Indian airports, they use the old school kind of um, scanner still that scan everything 2D. Imagine what this looks like 2D. A, a, a luggage case full of these. They thought that we had a whole bunch of knives in the luggage. Mm -hmm. Every single place we went trying to get home, we had to unpack all of our luggage because we had these. We had a bunch of metal statues stuffed into Kyle's shoes because that was the only place they would fit. And we had a bunch of bars of soap. So we basically looked like we had a whole lot of weapons in our <laughs> luggage everywhere we went until we got to the bigger airports that had a lot higher quality scanners that they could really tell what the stuff was. But so, they also sell these online if you like these strainers. Ooh, that is beautiful. Yeah, I said could, that we also sell them. Hmm? I was gonna say, if you could right. maybe put the link in the oh, yeah. chat, I would love to check out that site. I figured while we were showing off our international tea drinking accoutrement, yes. um, I have my thermo from Paraguay. I did field work in Paraguay a couple of summers ago. And if anyone knows anything about that area of South America, they all drink yerba mate. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is specifically for terrera, which sounds like you're stuttering, but terrera is uh, essentially cold yerba mate. It's ground very fine and everyone has their thermo. It's a social custom to just sit in a circle. You pour your mate into your cup that usually has a little holder right on your thermo. Uh, you pour the mate in there and then you pour the water in from your thermo. And I don't have my bambilla which is uh, the straw that you use, but it's a straw mm. with a filter on the end. Yes. And so that the tea that's in the cup, you don't drink up all the tea leaves. But what's really interesting is what it is. You have your terere, you pour the water in up to the top, you drink your, in oh, there's a bambia. Thank yep, you. Yep, looks Zach. like this. If I went looking for mine, I couldn't find it. <laughs> and, I have uh, a steampunk version too. Ooh. Oh, cool. Bambias are great if you have like a cup that you just want to pour tea leaves in. But everyone just sits in a circle and you all drink from the same bambia, from the same thermo, the same cup. Not good now in a pandemic. I honestly wonder uh, how that custom has adapted because it's such a part of their culture. And like you'll see kids even with thermos and their tada, which is one of the highest caffeine content plants in the world. Yeah. You'll have like eight year old kids drinking mate just all day. No, oh, it's like Italians and their coffee and wine for kids. <laughs> yeah. That's somebody who grew up like that. When I was in Buenos Aires, um, the mm -hmm. film crew were like, oh, this is, you, know, you don't want to drink this. It's yerba mate. And I was like, I, give it to me. And it was great. I loved it. I came home with a cup and a whole sack of it. And it's wonderful. It's absolutely terrific. It'll get you going in the morning, especially when you have to get up at four and leave the house by five. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, my team, yeah, the, the people at I'm really upset because that. the brand that I really like, that I brought a lot back from Paraguay, mm -hmm. you know, it's been two years. I drank all of it yeah. now. It's like, you know, $3.00 like just comparing between uh, Paraguay money to our money. If we were to buy it in Paraguay, it would cost like three to five dollars for us for like a one pound bag of terre. But the shipping. I went to try to find it online and it's like twenty dollars. I'm like, yeah. So Is that the thing that's spelled T-A-R-A-G-U-I? Uh, T-E-R-R-E-R-E. -R -R -E -R -E. Okay, I'm just, look. I was looking up Bumbios online and then a thing popped up as a 
T -A, that that word that I said, a type of yerba mate and a uh, bombilla and a glass and leather gourd. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's it. Yeah, it is. But I think they, I know when, uh, when I was down there, even when you saw it written out, it was spelled T-E-R-E-R-E -E -R -E, or like T-E-R-R-E-R-E. -E -E. It's Guarani, which is a native language, which sounds like mumbled Spanish. It's very difficult to understand. So, Chrisella, I think, what, did you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, T and Absinthe turned me on to some, they have some Yerba Mate blends. Um, mm -hmm. Probably not like, not exactly like Torreira. Um, uh, but they turned me on to that because I couldn't have regular tea for a long time because of the oxalic acid. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I fixed that problem. I could drink real tea again. But uh, Yerba Mate, it, I don't know if it's, if it's different um, when it's done like Western tea style or you know, North American tea style, but usually they recommend blending it with, with mints or fruit or other, other notes. Mm -hmm. but I haven't, so I haven't had it straight before. It, they had a really good mint mate tea and then they discontinued it. And I'm like, why guys, why? You are my dealer. So it is a lot different when you get it up, like what I'll call westernized mate. Mm -hmm. It's almost all leaves. And like they keep the leaves pretty big because when people up here think of tea, they think of leaves. Um, down there, it's some leaves, some stems, some powder. It's uh, so that more of it infuses because the, ma the chemicals within the yerba mate plant that like the caffeine chemicals are even in the stems. Oh, so, so they make, make use of all parts. Yeah, and with uh, Terrera specifically, most people drink tea warm, so you can infuse the larger leaves and get more out, but Terrera is specifically cold. So you want finer particles so that it infuses better in the cold water. So it's cold brewed and not brewed and then chilled. Right, oh. and it's, it's not even brewed because brewing means it's sitting there. You literally pour the, the mate into the cup, pour the water on it, let everything get just moist and wet, and then you drink the whole cup in one go. And then you pass. Hmm. That sounds like something um, perfect for me to get when um, I recover from um, of my refi uh, finances from all of this. <laughs> because I have a sleep disorder where basically my brain always tells me I'm um, sleep deprived no matter how much sleep I get. And um, I do love um, the rest of my, um, um, trying to remember how to pronounce it, the, um, uh, sorry, I'm terrible with names and pronouncing um, names. Um, but the tea sounds like it's perfect. For, um, I've had the westernized version, but the um, the ver uh, version you're talking about sounds absolutely perfect for me, especially because I could take it with me on the go. Oh, yeah. the Tara, yeah. yeah. I'm uh, I'm on Amazon right now trying to see if I can find the brand. The brand I like is called Campesino, but it's hard to find. Another good one from South America is Kurupi, and I'll just pull up some links and put them in the uh. Awesome. In the chat there. Thank you. While we're talking about international stuff, I do, still, I do still keep this on hand. So this may not look like a lot, but this is my old Peace Corps teapot, though I added the strainer later. So we got a tea um, in Africa, uh, in the Gambia, where I was stationed. They all would, um, they, had a, they had their own version of the tea ceremony. They would drink it, they would refer to it as a taya. Um, which is a green tea, a very strongly, a strong green tea. And okay, uh, uh, oh, looks like my Amazon package arrived, so I'll finish up and I'll go grab that. Uh, but a strong green tea because they boil it over and over, which makes a really bitter taste, but makes a really concentrated caffeine. And then they mix it and aerate it and they do the long pour stuff like that. And these are the little, uh, you know, enamel cast iron teapots they would use. So I brought this, so I would use this in Peace Corps. I brought this home and it's kind of been one of my little travel adventure teapots ever since. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> Disinfect your package. <laughs> wash your hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> when in doubt, wash your hands.
I'm just leaving my Amazon packages next to my front door and I'm calling it the decon corridor. It's a good yeah. idea. Three yep. feet wide. <laughs> yep, if you can leave them outside the house for at least a day, that's the best, best solution. And if not, aseptic technique to get your shit out of the box and then dump it in the trash. Yeah. Dump the packaging, not the shit. Not Apartment the building, that's not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> I haven't been able to find any spray Lysol in stores, but thankfully the nonprofit I work for has a stash of actual spray Lysol. So I brought a can home that and Clorox wipes because you can't find those either anymore. And FYI, if anybody makes a, Jared knows this one, if anybody makes um, a bleach solution, like a 10-1 bleach or 110 bleach solution, um, bleach dilutes, uh, when it's diluted, it breaks down quicker. So not only does bleach expire after about six months from being packaged in the production factory, but if you make it in the solution, basically the next day it's useless. So make a new fresh one every day if you need to use a bleach solution rather than a cleaner. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I managed to yeah. buy a um, pack of um, disinfectant wipes on Amazon um, the day I was um, shopping before um, oh, see this one. Doors start closing and um, and everything. Yes, yeah, is. because I found um, doing the beginning of the madness that they were all out of wipes and sanitizing spray. Um, but it took until uh, I think I was shopping on around the six or something, and it took until um, Monday to be delivered. I'm it back. Looks like Ellen's microphone is still not working. Uh, Bad thing. Well, at least hope she can enjoy the company, and especially seeing you know, you know, seeing everybody, and you know, both, and especially seeing you and Aaron together too. Hopefully, she can enjoy watching that as we talk. Yep. So. And you can, you can, of course, say no and, and not, you know, um, tell the story, but, um, you know, Deborah, but you mentioned film crew when you were. Yes. Uh, I was in Buenos Aires filming a commercial that was supposed to air for the Super Bowl. It was a heart medication and I can't remember what it was, but we finished the filming. It was fabulous. I had a wonderful time. A week before the Super Bowl, they found out that that drug gave people killed people. So oh. the commercial never filmed, oh. uh, never aired, but um, I bought my car with the money I got from the commercial. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose it's not all that bad, um, but it was exciting. I got to, um, I was only filming, I was down there for 10 days and I only filmed about five of those days. So I got to go to all of the, um, the cemeteries and wander around Buenos Aires and got to see where Eva Perón was buried and it was wonderful. Um, it's interesting to be a vegetarian in the land of beef, <laughs> but a lot of the women on the crew were also vegetarians, so they helped me out. Uh, it was a lot of fun. That was years ago. I wish I could what part of the city did you stay in? Uh, I stayed in Buenos Aires. No, yeah, what what neighborhood? I was down there when I went. Oh, I, was in uh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I was within walking distance of where um, Eva Peron was buried. Okay, um, it was in a hotel. I I could pull the stuff out, but I didn't think about it. No, I know, I know what you're talking about because um, I went to Buenos Aires after Paraguay because I figured mm -hmm. I'm right there. Why not? <laughs> so. Yeah, I was, thinking, uh, I was thinking like two blocks away from the zoo and it was a train ride or a bus ride to get to the cemetery. Uh -huh. And then like a two hour walk home because I just felt like walking back. Yeah, the city. Uh, when I was in Paris, we walked like crazy. Um, you know, you could take the train mm -hmm. up to, um, to Sacre Coeur, but it was such a nice walk. Yeah. <laughs> So beautiful. I think I, I think I actually lost weight in Paris, which I have no idea how. Mm -hmm. To anyone, if you ever get the chance to travel to Buenos Aires, if you remember what Philly used to look like with the beginning of all the modern architecture being yeah. built, still a lot of the old architecture. I think you mean like in the center city? 
no, uh, more like Old City, but like Old City 10, 15 years ago before all the sidewalks were clean. Okay. It's been a, it's been a while since I've been to uh, and many parts, really, apart from the zoo, so. Yeah. They're not so good about keeping people from letting their dogs just poop on the sidewalk and leaving it there. Everywhere. 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 Nobody cleans up after their dog. Mm. It's disgusting. People are also leaving uh, latex gloves all over the place after they're done at a grocery store or the gas pump or whatever. It's all over the sidewalks outside. Gross. Yeah, public... What's, what's, what's the word? Cleanliness? Consideration? Yeah. yeah. Common sense? There's, <laughs> there's a word for like specifically cleaning up trash that is eluding me right now. Sanitation. Sanitation. Let's hear it for sanitation. Yeah. There's no such thing as the good old days. <laughs> no, there is now. But. That was one of the things. Um, each time I've been to um, London, um, and it's the last time I was there was like well over 10, 15 years ago, but uh, the streets were so clean. Yeah. <laughs> like compared to you know, a city like New York or uh, DC or anything like that. It's like, where am I? <laughs> Vancouver, the whole Pacific Northwest is like that, but especially Vancouver. Um, yes. When my, when my boss and I, um, Jared and I actually are covered. So when our boss and I went to Vancouver last, oh my God, four years ago, almost, three years ago, time flies. Um, with the exception of the touristy areas, areas, there were no trash cans anywhere. And yet there was no trash anywhere. People would just take, take it with them. It was crazy. I want to say Wellington, New Zealand is a bit like that, but not so much. Um, Auckland, even less so. I wish people wouldn't trash the forest I work in. Every time I go on a hike, I am I carrying carry out bag and I pick up trash as I go. Where are you from? My uh, Ellen just reminded me about the last time we went um, camping as a family. Um, I carried, uh, my sisters and I carried out two trash bags um, on our way um, back to the car, um, which I know is a good hike back from the campsite we were at. Yeah, Ellen's comment is uh, was what reminded me of that. And someone, uh, someone asked me where I work. Jared, was that you? Yes, yes. Uh, so I work in the Pine Barrens in Brendan oh. oh. State Forest on the grounds of a historic farming village called White Spog Village, which you guys are more than welcome to come out and hike our trails if you're in and around New Jersey. We have 3,000 acres of wetlands and forests. Uh, we're also the only historic village in New Jersey and possibly the entire U.S. to not only still be farming for the reason it was built in the 1800s, but by the same family. Wow. I regret that the only um are the Pine Barrens, which with which I'm familiar, is probably oh. Cheesequake. <laughs> Did you just say Cheesequake? Yes. That's nowhere near the Pine Barrens. Really? <laughs> yeah, no, that's too far north. Okay, never mind then. Um, the Pine Barrens start just around, uh, it's below Mammoth Battlefield. I'll say Jackson would, yeah, because I think Collier's Mill is included and as in Pink Wildlife Management Area. I think those are included in the Pine Barrens, but really, Brendan T. Burn State Forest is the start of the Pine Barrens. It's the northern edge. Um, yes, aren't you doing a tour tomorrow? I am doing a hike tomorrow. If you guys would like to cool. join, I can put a link. It's a virtual hike, so oh. you can oh, see yes. my village. I was gonna say. <laughs> Get on your treadmills, folks. <laughs> Yeah, someone was saying they were gonna like hike along with me on their treadmill. <laughs> I love that. Yes, if I forget to do it, yell at me, but I can put these links in the little doobly doo when I post this on YouTube. Doobly doo. Doobly doo. Doobly -doo. That, that's apparently a what YouTube term. people call it. They refer to it as a doobly doo. I don't oh my know god, it is a area, yes. I love it. I love it so much. So, um, it was joking. Ellen, yes. I actually saw you appear on screen briefly. Uh huh. Does that mean your microphone is working? 
I believe it is working. <laughs> Yes. Do you mind introducing yourself and going off your tea and throwing up your teacup? Jamie, um, of course, is my middle daughter. Erin um, is my granddaughter. And my mug is made by a good friend of mine who I have enjoyed tea with quite a few times. Um, we would have tea every day when I visited at her house and we made quite a ceremony of it. But this is a mug that she made. I use it for all my tea. Um, I like large cups. Um, I think Jamie has at least one of my teapots, so not, or not yet. No, I don't have um, your teapot. Uh, uh, that's something I've not, uh, not um, kidnapped from you. Okay. <laughs> I've seen quite a few things, and, like oh, some that's why it's up on a cabinet. Yeah, and then we have the same dragonfly teapot, cast iron teapot, but mine's larger. <laughs> so. Hey, mine was found at a thrift store. Ah, uh, well, I paid half price for mine <laughs> at Tivana. I don't have a cast iron teapot. Is the um. Is the idea that it keeps the tea hot longer? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mom, what type of tea are you drinking? Did you mention that? Um, Irish breakfast today. Um, he didn't make one of his teas from the Indian store. Um, he, we tend to buy our teas at a local, um, independent little Indian market nearby. It has a nice little um, Middle Eastern store right next to it. And we pick up dates there and then go and get our teas. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yes. He had a um, English mother-in-law at one time and Welch, Welch. Um, <laughs> mother in law, uh huh, and she um got him onto some teas as he says, good tea, mm -hmm. good tea. and Welch cakes. I used to have one of those uh stores at the foot of the hill where I used to live when I was living in Plainsboro. And I used to love it because that's where I would get all the, all the best spices for when I would make up my chai mix. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, um, I remember you talking about, um, of Jess, you were talking about the um, hiking that, of, and hike, of the trails you um, work at. Mm -hmm. um, the camp, of, um, I'm lucky to live just off of the Susquehanna State Park um, down in Maryland in Hoffa County mm -hmm. um, at a campground called Camp Bramblewood. It I've normally it. hosts, I'm sorry, what was that? I've heard of it. Oh, it's a beautiful place. Um, and it normally hosts large events that start um, in just a couple weeks, but for a good reason, that's not going to happen. Um, but you could easily, especially if you go on the back trails of the campground, you could easily spend two hours on a hike um, if you want to get lost in the um, deer trails and um, look at the creeks and everything, uh, which is what I did on Wednesday. No, mm -hmm. was it was well, no, it was Tuesday because Wednesday was rainy. Yeah, last that that's kind of how the pine barrens are. Uh, the hardest thing about the Pine Barrens is there are no, like, geological markers to tell you where you are. It is just flat. <laughs> and all of it kind of looks the same. So it is very easy to get lost in the Pine Barrens. But it's nice. It's, it's nice, easy to get lost, but you do have to watch out for the Jersey Devil, as we found out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thankfully, it's... Yeah, apparently. Thankfully, um, it's pretty, well, for me at least, it's pretty easy to not get lost at the campground, but I've been living here for 10 years, and uh, <laughs> I know my way back to the trails without too much difficulty, as Erin um, found out the other day. That's great. Yeah, I know my section of the forest, but 
other forests I'm not as well versed with. Just yeah, don't no. hike down to the river when it's about to rain. Can't yeah. hike back up. Well, I did that once and then of um doing um one of the pagan events that was here and um with a um group of people. Um and it started to I mean, it was just a misty rain at first and then it started to rain heavily. And I was dressed for the event, not for going out in public. Um, but um, we hiked down to the state park and I had to borrow um, some of a scarf from somebody. <laughs> and um, so that I was decent for public view. Um, and <laughs> then we had to hike the, uh, the, um, up the road to get back to the campground. Funnily enough, uh, while we're talking about the woods and everything, uh, Sarah knows this. She and I um, were going to do a, um, we're watching these three horror movies tomorrow. They all have, I picked them because they all have a very uh, strong um, don't go in the woods themes to them. <laughs> it's we're also the only people. No, um, but we're also the only people at our place of work where we run programs running around in the woods. So that's kind of <laughs> ironic. Fitting. Yes. Mm -hmm. At least Alanis Alanis Morissette style of ironic. <laughs> but no, but yeah. no, they're the ritual, the monster, and the witch. To answer your question, Jess. I've never heard of the monster. It's not very well known. Um, it's I think they're all like sure. independent. I guess like the best known of them is probably uh, the witch. The witch. Yeah. The one with the goat. Mm -hmm. Jared is a movie expert extraordinaire. <laughs> if you have any movie questions ever, you ask Jared. Well, I figured he kind of looks like Indiana Jones right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's on purpose. It was also the, only, uh, the easiest yeah. costume I could put together in, um, in a pinch. <laughs> My parents um, decided that it would be fun to have a family text, which has, um, has its blessings. But my family, without me, did a um, group watching of The Big Lebowski last night. <laughs> that I've never seen cosplay. it, so now I have to watch it tonight. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Worth Definitely watching. have to watch it. Okay. It was I always fun, my first time room. watching Rocky Horror Picture Show with my family. Without <laughs> group participation. Interesting. Yeah, yeah it was... How old, um, is, how old is Aaron? Oh, Erin is 14. 14 but, oh, okay. um, oh, okay. At 11, <laughs> she could beat everybody at Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> everybody wins cards. So, who wants to hear my Rocky Horror Picture Show story as to my, my first experiences with it? Oh, oh this has got to be good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I used to work at a Boy Scout camp. And mm -hmm. a lot of the older staff members, they were part of the Rocky Horror Club up there. Uh, there would be spontaneous uh, people dancing the time warp in the staff area as sort of like, you know, date breaks and stuff like that. Um, I never really knew what, I didn't know what was going on then, but I, I, I knew the, the dancing and the music because, the dances and the music because of it. And I knew about it because my uh, godparents kid always wore a Rocky Horror shirt, but I really didn't know what it was about. So one day they were gonna do a viewing of the movie um, this was this was on the weekends when the scouts were in home. They're going to do a viewing of the movie at one at the staff area lounge, and when we found out, uh, my friend John and I were going down there, and they wouldn't let us in, uh, and we were trying to figure out why. But they just closed the door. They're acting like kind of goose for us. <laughs> well, I found out later that John was never really all that popular. So they weren't letting us in because of him. They actually said afterwards, if you would come up alone, uh, you would, you know, we would have let you in. But the entire time we were running down there, John was like, Zach, do you want to see this movie? I'm like, what is it? Oh, it's the funniest comedy in the world. You're going to love it. He hyped it as sort of like uh, this Zucker Brothers type airplane comedy. So I just thought it was this great comedy that I never got a chance to. So later that year after camp had closed down, um, my parents were divorced. It was weekend with my dad and my dad would take us to the video store and let us pick out movies. <laughs> and he's, and he's like, go grab a movie. And I'm looking around and I see the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I grab the movie. I say, can we watch this one? And he just gives me this look. And he says, Zach, do you know what this is? And I said, well, my friend John 
uh, <laughs> says it's, it's this really great comedy. And I could see the wheels turning in his head. And I think the exact thought he had was, well, he's going to have to learn something. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather he learn it from me than on the streets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we rent the movie. I put it in. And my entire face, the entire movie was like. <laughs> <laughs> No, I believed in corrupting my children early. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that, with that mental, it, it, it protects them from the wrong kinds of corruption. Yes. <laughs> my Provides dad context. I saw the Rocky Horror Knowledge is power. I was six or seven. Aww. <laughs> so a lot of the jokes went over my head, but we were a big musical theater family, so we were always watching musicals. It is the only musical my dad knew, so <laughs> it was the one we watched with him. Uh, I yeah, grew up I in St. Louis, and the thing to do was you got kidnapped on your 16th birthday, and your friends took you to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> and St. Louis had a huge, huge Rocky Horror community at that time. It was back in the early, late, late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, it must have been 79 or 80 when I saw it. Mm -hmm. So this was at the, at the beginnings of all of that. Um, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we, that, that year, I think I spent almost every other weekend seeing Rocky Horror. <laughs> well, I was an art student and they showed it at my um, independent art school. Uh -huh. um, and this would have been 77 or 78. So when I saw it and it made quite an impact. It was before everybody got up and did the whole thing mm. um, along with it. So I really got to sit there and enjoy and not get it, take the whole thing in before I got into going um, the midnight showings later on when the kids were young. Mm -hmm. We didn't take them, but we used to go have our Friday nights. Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the um, seven-year-old story from Jess, um, so there's, I don't know if anybody here is very familiar with uh, Newark, Delaware, not Newark, Newark. Yeah. Um, and uh, there used to be, until very recently, a very old theater there, um, not like antique old, just old and like smelled really funky old um and they had one of the original rocky reels and they were the, one of the longest running still a active troops um called um formal dress optional and when we were in undergrad we used to go at least once a month um if not more to go see it the reel was so old that usually the show never started till like 1 a.m because the reel would break at least twice um but one time I see everybody walking out and there is a seven-year-old on her dad's shoulders walking out afterwards and her face was just like, I don't know what I just saw. I don't oh, know how to process this. Like she was just in full shock and that was where I was kind of like, all right, I get what dad was trying to do, but I think you might have gone too far. She was clearly not ready for this. <laughs> like... Yeah, I think going to lot. the theater is a little much for a seven-year seven year old. <laughs> there's a lot that happens in shadow casts that's much more overt than just Yeah, that. no, shadow cast for a seven-year-old, bad, bad yeah, idea. Yeah, Especially yeah. that shadow yeah. cast. That shadow yeah. cast was really big on playing with gender role issues, and there is a lot of flashing that happens. More than <laughs> home of happiness? Yes. Oh, wow. My younger sister is like, <laughs> Kate was ago. Rocky. You, I mean, was Frank usually. So you, you, you know our friend Kate from the West Coast. She was usually Frank. So, and there was a lot of flashing. <laughs> As you know, she likes to flash. <laughs> My younger sister is 10 years younger than me. And so um, this didn't come up with Rocky Horror, but um, Rachel, my older sister, was uh, introducing me when back when the movie version came out to um, Sweeney Todd. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, my younger sister was like, what are you guys talking about? And so that was an interesting case of, oh, shit, how much can we reveal here? Because <laughs> she was just uh. in middle school at the time. The first time I watched it, it was with my mom and my stepdad. It was very uncomfortable to watch it with them. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Rocky Horror? Yeah, Rocky Horror. 
I, I could definitely see it with your mom and stepdad. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could see it. Maybe that should be a tea time night, Rocky theme tea time. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a weird experience. Um, I'm I'm um, on the asexual spectrum, so I follow a lot of those, uh, you know, online forums. Um, and having to tell, like, an 18 year old coming onto the, onto the forum and saying, so I rented and watched the Rocky Horror Picture Show last night. Can someone explain it to me? Because I don't think I under, I really get it. And it was just such a strange, like, A, wow, I feel old. (laughs) B, oh yeah, asexual. And it's just, it wasn't just me, but a whole bunch of people are like, so it's very, the home movie experience is very different than the live theater experience. Mm-hmm. So yes, the, the comedy is about it being so completely over-sexualized that it does get to airplane levels of, of parody and ridiculousness. But re- at least give, give the shadow cast a try before you pass on it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was in the shadow cast for four years in Madison. So, I used to date a that was fun. New York. <laughs> Who'd you I was play? dating a criminologist. Um, Columbia. Nice. Because I'm always late and she was the last to come. So, you know. <laughs> Other than uh, Dr. Scott. Yep. At the community college I was at, we did um, a shadow cast two years in a row. And the second year, um, well, the first year they didn't have anybody helping with the costuming. And the um, second year, I was like, look. I at least have pieces in my wardrobe that would help with this. So just buy the necessary, um, some of the necessary pieces and I'll provide the rest. And um, so I didn't, I wasn't in the shadow cast, but I provided the uh, a majority of the costumes for the shadow cast. Nice. Sarah, do you want to talk about Del Val's <laughs> Rocky Horror? Oh, we did do a Rocky. That was... That's kind of a blur for me, honestly. Oh, <laughs> All my memory that exists of it is the image of our of, of our group photo and yeah. um, and Sam again to, with the flashing. <laughs> to uh, to to describe the college that Sarah and I went to, which is where we met, it is an agriculture and animal science school where. Farm school. Um, we started the restarted the drama club because there was no drama club. And well, they, technically there was, and then it died, and then I resurrected it after its four-year hiatus. That's why I said restarted. <laughs> oh, I so, thought you said we started. No, okay. no, re r e s t a r t. Anyway, um, so I had no production went on while I was there, but the year after I left, they did Rocky Horror, so I went back for it. Regardless. This school, when I graduated, its unofficial theme song was Kenny Chesney, She Thinks My Tractor Sexy. Uh-huh. So if Which is how we met, by the way, is we were going to do Bohemian Rhapsody together because we were the only people in the entire freshman slash transfer class that knew that song and wanted to do it on karaoke. And then they skipped us for it, She Thinks My Tractor Sexy. It is, it is a very, very country sort of sort of school and the first production they decided to do was Rocky Horror. So not the first production. It was our third. We also did the one act series, which had a lot of Danny Kay and Abbott and Costello and other things that also were we were like, you need culture. Um and then um I'm sorry, that was the second then because the other other thing I'm thinking of was part of the one acts where we opened up with uh, the mysterious ticking noise. But with um but with Rocky Horror at this very hick school, you had some of the student body at the show. And in the beginning, they're like, all right, what is this? And then, wait, who was playing Frank? That was Sam, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, that was Sam. Sam's the only one who would be that kind of person to that degree. She's the most extra person I've met in a long time. She really is. So this, this girl, Sam, we know. She went full bore, like Frankenfurter, hypersexual, like coming out in like just lingerie and a corset. And I think she just had pasties on it. I think she just had pasties on. Uh, we can look at the photo. Um, but it was, 
all all of these like ag boys were just like <laughs> and apparently this worked the the drought i graduated that year the drama club has been going strong since um since we both left and it's still functional and it actually got so many people involved it's not like a huge group but so many people were supportive of that and then the um the choir and the chamber orchestra that I got started with another friend that now the liberal arts department has grown and the and the college became a university because they expanded their liberal arts department so big. So clearly we weren't the only ones who had a part in it because there had to be a lot of money put into it. But that um, I'd like to believe that helped show the new president that, you know, there was a want for liberal arts at mm -hmm. that school. Hockey horror saves the school. Exactly. <laughs> That's that's the storyline I'm going with for the rest of forever. The weird goth kids at Rocky Horror help the ag school. Heathens. <laughs> what, what Not the super Christian ag school. That was founded as a Jewish school. Yeah, founded by Jews. Weirder. <laughs> you know, there, there, there's like one of those like 80s movies set up about this. You know, we gotta save the school. Let's put on a show. And it's Rocky <laughs> Horror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I'm imagining what 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 uh, a, ma a mass watching uh, uh, of Rocky Horror would be like via Zoom, <laughs> as we're I'll all just yelling the, the callbacks <laughs> at each other. <laughs> Window thing yeah. doesn't know who's talking. <laughs> Everybody needs to lay a piece of wax paper over their keyboard, so that way when we throw toast, the crumbs don't go in the keyboard. <laughs> The weird thing about that is because of the delay effect, whenever we tried to do something in sync, it would be, it would go horribly. It would go horribly wrong. Is it on Netflix? We could, uh, the Netflix watch party. Um, That's the word. I was, I forgot what a, I forgot the term watch party. My brain just. The I actually like the Zoom plus a, video, a video watch party better. Mm-hmm. I had to straighten up everything over there so they could deliver. That actually reminds me, um, what are we using, Sarah, for tomorrow? Oh, I thought you had figured that out since you knew where the videos were streaming from. <laughs> oh, well. Um, I know you most of them are on party Netflix. Or we can do your way, so. Oh, that, I thought you meant where we're streaming. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, either way that uses Netflix. I don't know. We'll figure it out later when other people aren't listening. <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe. <laughs> James just came back in from doing some stuff around the campground, and he is drenched. Oh dear. For those who don't know, this is James, my partner. Hey James. He's able to live at the campground because of his hard work. Rocky Horror is not on Netflix. <sighs> yeah, and neither on Checking Hulu. Hulu. Not on Hulu. Might be Amazon Prime or something. You could check Prime. All else fail, someone has a DVD. <laughs> I think we I have a VHS. <laughs> Who here doesn't have this me this movie just burnt into their memory by now? Yeah, I mean, we could all just do it from memory and just reenact the whole thing. That's a possibility. Yeah. So well, that would be fun. <laughs> Zoom reenact reenaction of the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, you can rent it via YouTube. Bring the lips real close. Start the opening. <laughs> Michael Rooney was in. I was actually looking up those uh, Muscle Man costume shirts so I could be Rocky. <laughs> Muscle man shirt, put on the blonde wig, and can't see it. And, and, and I'll just stay seated so you don't have to worry about seeing the gold LeMay shorts. <laughs> we'll just we'll all wear our gold LeMay shorts, and no one will be able to see them. <laughs> I'm wearing them now. <laughs> I think mine are in storage. <laughs> I actually I, I don't know where they are but don't storage so rocky is not on Anything. amazon prime when i search for it the first thing that shows up is isle of lesbos <laughs> okay thanks algorithm that is on amazon prime am I missing it? so Those i just little shot my bose um in your headphones i've been missing for a while so I was like, yay! It's nice when um, you find a pair of $300 headphones that have been gone missing. Oh, yeah. Oh, I had to get them for school. 
You know what that reminds me assuming that you know we can be in social groups in public in October um, for anybody who is within reasonable distance of Jersey City um, the Harsimuth Cemetery is one of the oldest cemeteries in the country. Um, it uh, has a lot of Revolutionary War um, soldiers buried there. They, every Halloween, have the Home of Happiness shadow cast come from New Hope to do a show in the cemetery. It's very cool. Oh, cool. It's very cold, too. Um, I feel very bad for Columbia every year and for Rocky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But they I do think everyone's it rubbing like... Rocky, and so the friction keeps them warm. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky. Like they did in the snow last year. That's how. That's how they. They are like the postal service. They do this show no matter what. <laughs> wow, that's devotion. Yep. I'll be in Cleveland for October for the Jane Austen Society annual general meeting. Woohoo! I might be in uh, London at the beginning of October. Um, yeah, my mom was going to do the um, London Marathon, which was supposed to be this at the end of this April, but then got postponed, mm -hmm. understandably. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be um, busy. Uh, uh, James, and I'd love to go to the cemetery um, cast, but unfortunately, I'm sure he'll be working as long as um, things are open again, because um, there's supposed to be a Nightmare Music of a War Music Festival called Nightmare that weekend. Mm. Yeah, I was hoping, um, I looked on my calendar to see what day Halloween fell on, because if it fell on the weekend, I knew he'd be working. It's always hard when it falls on the weekend, because trick-or-treaters versus Halloween party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. I can't do both. I, I really can't do both at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I don't have to worry about trick-or-treaters. I just have to worry about whether um, James is available to do anything. Right. Yeah, we have a pagan, uh, pagan group I'm in which may have its service that day instead of our normal um, next weekend because mm -hmm. Fren will be in um, England for a concert, singing in a concert for um, the anniversary of um, the Mayflower um, landing in Plymouth. Cool. Ooh. Yes, it's something like 400 years. That, so I don't remember how many years, but there's, she's doing it both in England and in Massachusetts. The same concert. Cool. Yeah, she's yeah, the one who made my mug. It's kind of impossible to do a ritual in the backyard with trick or treaters wandering around the neighborhood. So really yeah doing it on actual halloween i don't think i've ever been able to do a Samhain ritual on actual halloween <laughs> yeah. yeah me either well from what i know about the, um um of, of, of my friend's house um from my mom um because i've not had the pleasure to be there yet um but i believe the house is um set up in such a way that she doesn't have to worry about trick-or-treaters as well well, it's, we have it in the basement. We have an altar room in the basement. Yeah. And someone else, I'm assuming, to answer the door. <laughs> yeah. We leave it open so people can come in. <laughs> because we're all in the basement. We're not going to be answering no door. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But as long as the crazy woman next door doesn't bother us. <laughs> oh yes she has a crazy neighbor the, the police know about it great oh. yes <laughs> oh 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 excuse me it's um, I'm not at all um, bored or anything. It's just my sleep disorder. Dude, you are in good company. Chronic illness and with chronic fatigue over here. And the rain is not helping with the flaring. <laughs> Tell me about it. Five of my allergies here, and I just had 
two root canals. And oh my God. I had two broken teeth next to each other. And so the two teeth are right next to each other and emergency root canal on Thursday. I told you to stop opening the beer bottles with your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I take after my mom with um, chronic illnesses, and I think she has my sleep disorder, but um, her doctor hasn't um, um, given her um, the before for sleep um, study yet. Ah. Those things are so freaking terrible. I didn't realize how bad it was. At first, when I got started, I was so excited because the bed was the comfiest bed I'd ever slept on in my life. <laughs> but... First of all, they're $10,000 beds. No wonder it turns out. Um, yeah. But the grease in your hair, nobody warned me to bring a hat. Yeah. And now I have to get a second one done because they were like, oh, we did it wrong. You shouldn't have had the 12 hour. You should have had the 48 hour. Oh, God. Because they think I might have what my guess is you're alluding to. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just pain somnia because, you know, as, as you know, Ellen, too, I'm sure when you are in a lot of pain, it's kind of hard to sleep and then you're kind of fatigued all day. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have, I see fibromyalgia and I have, um, well, my sleep disorder is isopathic hyposomnia, mm -hmm. which took me a while to be able to remember the lo of the name because of it being so long. Um, <laughs> But um, it, uh, I had no problem sleeping during the sleep study because of not being allowed caffeine for, I think it was 48 hours and no naps for, for uh, like, it was either 24 hours or 48 hours before this. I had no naps and um, no caffeine. And I had to, um, for two weeks, be, either one or two weeks before this, I had to have a traditional sleep schedule where I was only getting about eight hours of sleep. So come sleep study, I slept so easily and the naps I felt of, um, uh, I felt like I did, um, didn't fall asleep at all, but apparently I fell asleep very quickly. Um, although my new psychiatrist, is, um, I think thought I'd have me do a new sleep study because um, unfortunately I'm I'm not happy with my new psychiatrist, but um, the only way I could keep my current therapist is if I have a psychiatrist through this mental health clinic I go to. Mm -hmm. And my therapist is well worth keeping. I've yeah. followed her from three of, um, the location I'm at now is the second time I followed her from the original location I met her. Wow, that's good. Yeah, that, that's how well I like this therapist. It's wow. so important to have a good one that you like. Yeah the make or break between the therapy actually working. It's hard to break a new one in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's nice finding one that is understanding of paganism. That's it. Right. <laughs> I have to say on the other side of that, it's always fun uh, when I let the pagan client know that I'm cool with things. I've actually had them come in ready with the speech prepared. And I'm like, you don't know where I hang out. <laughs> <laughs> you should just keep keep uh, a few little accoutrement on hand and like on a tray or something and when they start talking just kind of walk over slowly as if you're like kind of lis you're listening but you know I've, I've got something else I'm doing and they're gonna be like what the hell is he doing and then just walk over show them the tray <laughs> of, <all. laughs> of like pentagrams and statues and everything and and just be like a small a altar behind the curtain. You just pull the curtain. Yeah, just light some sage when, when the, while they're talking, just <laughs> silently. See how long, just keep doing all these things and see how long till they notice. I don't know if this is actually professional. I'm just joking. Well, not, what but. I was thinking of doing <laughs> is, uh, and I actually have to go through and make up this, uh, the poster for it, but there is uh, a great quote about Kali uh, that I, I've been meaning to post on my wall. And uh, the quote, and I'm doing this from memory, I have to look it up, is Holly's boon um, is that she, by forcing us to face the terror of life, she, she enables us to live life to, it, to its fullest. Mm -hmm. yes. And that, I love that quote because it's a great quote to really, it's a great example of what we try to do in psychology with a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Because people, when they, people with anxiety issues are actually trying to avoid the anxiety. Mm -hmm. 
And the whole path of getting them better is to get them to be able to embrace the anxiety in a controlled way. Mm -hmm. And when they do that, they then can live life to its fullest. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I'm trying to find a reason to put that quote on the wall. Uh, that way, when anyone walks into my room, they're like, oh, Holly. <laughs> but with a reason. Yeah. yeah. Get me that quote. Yeah. I will cross stitch it for That's you. That's a good one. It on the wall. Cross yeah. stitch. Oh, how That's wonderful. What a great idea. I think that my therapist might be pagan, um, but I, I've i not asked um, for many reasons, but um, so it's one of those things where um, she uh, she uh, um, has um, some tattoos that can be subtly pagan, or they might have, or they just can be um, beautiful Celtic artwork that she liked. Um, and she has um, this um, one um, hoodie that she wears quite often with um, Isis on it, and um, just very yeah, subtle things that um, and everything, but I. I been good and not asked to. <laughs> so, so just and kind of just as a public service, and I've been trying to get people to know this. Uh, so I want to make sure. So I'm gonna drop in this video too. Uh, given the time of, of of the isolation, the quarantines, I just need to let people know that there, you know, through software like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, there's one place called Doxy.me, um, yes. doxy.me. It is possible to still connect with your therapists even during the social distancing and quarantining. Yes, um, I used that yesterday. Good. Still need to get one. Hey, on need to, My insurance kicks in in uh, next week. <laughs> so, um, when that happens, yeah, call, see who you can find that does it. Because if your therapist doesn't do it, you need to tell them about it. Because uh, most insurance companies will cover the teletherapy now. Uh, Doxy.me is free, and then the other services, they have paid levels for the HIPAA compliant version, you know, soft versions. Like this version of Zoom wouldn't be considered HIPAA compliant, but they do have a healthcare version. Mm -hmm. um, so what you would do is, yeah, so talk to your, if you have, you know, talk to your therapist about it, set it up, make sure you have that support going, especially now. Yeah, my therapist didn't have the setup working when my last appointment and I have to call and see if she has it set up now. I know my doctor has it set up. I unfortunately missed my last appointment and have to reschedule because I forgot to set the timer. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. I, was very, I was very lucky because even before my clinic set it up to where she could um, be, um, well, she could get paid um, she still used her office and I don't know, um, how correct this was of what to do, but she knew that it was, be uh, um, that, um, it was, if she knew it was a good idea for me to not miss my appointment. Um, so, um, we still had our appointment and then last week they had it set up for proper phone appointments where she was able to get paid. And this coming week, um, I have, if I had a, um, me a tell them of I know, a recorded message saying that um, they now have it set up for both um, phone appointments and video appointments. So I'm waiting to see which one my um, therapist wants to do on Monday. Okay, little chickens, I need to um, go and get some stuff done before the steampunk step out tonight. Ooh. So um, it was a delight. I hope we do this again. Do, let's do. <laughs> and uh, thank you for letting me uh, join, and I'm going to go buy some tea. It was lovely meeting you. It was nice meeting you. Love Goodbye. It. Lovely meeting you, and I love your outfit. <laughs> thank you. I had to get dressed up for the step out, so I figured I might as well wear it all day. I just got to say, I want to be you when I grow up. Like, I'm <laughs> loving everything about you so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do this again. This was so much fun. And I'm going to go buy some new tea. I will be hosting more. So, yeah, uh, I'll be posting the links in the cons Constellation 2020 as well as the Munchausen page for the future events. Wonderful, terrific, thank you. I should actually get going now myself. Still gotta make lunch and already my stomach's punishing me for it, so. <laughs> yeah, it's about that time anyways. So I think we probably should just all wrap up. 
Um, anyone wants to stay online, you can stay online and talk more. Um, everyone who did come, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I will be I will be creating new events uh, throughout. You know the well as as long as we need to. Um, and again, I'm also going to think about maybe doing some different themes: steampunk, renaissance, fairy festival. Uh, we could try to do a post-apocalyptic. Rocky uh, horror, Rocky okay. horror tea time. Rocky. Rocky. I am down for anything that lets me wear my awesome leather mask. So post-apocalyptic is totally, totally like up there on my list. Zach mask or or Tom mask. Tommy mask. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I, I can give you a preview of it. It's right back there behind me. Okay. I got to look on my crap. Is it what I think it is? Um, it's not. It's not it's a not. mask. Okay. Oh, oh nice. Oh, was that was that one made by Donovan? Uh, no. This was made by my friend Tommy. Uh, it is a cat skull, but it's also articulated, so it has a little strap that goes on oh. my chin. So when I talk, <laughs> so beautiful. the business name is Native Necromancy. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That um, mystical um, mystical um, mystical masks. Um, mystical, mystical masks. Mystical yeah. masks. And um, I love um, learning about other mask makers. Um, I think and Zach I now needs to make a personal mask plug. Makers, but most of my masks are from the couple I work for. I used to make a bunch out of uh, paper mache as um, in the New Orleans style. And uh, I made a ton for actually a fashion show once that was at Del Val. And I still have them and I need to donate them because I don't want them. If somebody wants them, take them. Oh, that's cool, Zach. Yeah, it's a little dusty, but this is one of my designs. I haven't been doing as much leather work as um, I have in the past. So I have a full time, my full time job kind of steals away my time. But yeah, there, there are many people out there with my masks as well. Mm -hmm. So just me. Yeah, actually, you right. gave you once gave me um, at FairyCon, the first ever FairyCon. Uh, you gave that was when I met you, and you gave me a bunch of tips for leather masks. And I started making one, and it's sitting in my pile of stuff right now of things to finish. Now that I finally have time, because it's been that long that I haven't had time to work on anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the last well, mask I made was in oh the eighties, goddess mask. And it's that my ex-boyfriend, I've got to remember to get it. <laughs> this is one of my favorite uh, masks from Mystical Masks. Um, and it was custom made for me because they make a lily mask um, uh, regularly. But my favorite lilies are um, um, beautiful red lilies. And if I can't remember the name of that specific lily, as I said, to both names. But um, I have many, many pieces from them, but this is, uh, most of my stuff from them is the um, crowns. Um, but of the masks I have that I don't wear often because of my glasses and not like in contacts, this is my favorite. How would you guys think about maybe doing a masquerade tea time next? Oh, fun. That Ooh, sounds wonderful. Yeah. Right. So I'll set that up then for the next theme. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So. Any, I'm, I'm going to stop recording, so any, anybody want to say any final words before I hit the stop button? Thank you for doing oh, this. Thank thing. you. Thank you. Yeah, this was fun. Oh, and thank you, Zach, for giving me finally a, um, a version of the word Munchausen that I actually like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, she's referring to the Munchausen Society, which is uh, the group I belong to. We do um, we do various performances at conventions and we'll be, be putting together an online Munchausen tonight. So stay tuned for that link as well. Okay. All right. So everyone, uh, thank you for joining us and uh, we'll see you at the next tea time.